All right, Brian, gym owner, millionaire. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Back again on the podcast. What is it? This is the third one with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Now, I figured it would be a good, like, kind of the good one in the new year, like, start kicking it off. Everybody's coming into the gym, like, wanting to get their fitness goals in hand and start off the new year, new me type of thing, like, where they're going to stay in the gym and they're going to stay consistent and... Um, it's always just a fun topic because they always bite off more than they can handle, it seems like, and they go away within a couple months, and the mentality of that is fascinating. Yeah, I would say you probably see that, uh, I mean, more in the, I don't know how to, I guess they're called Globo Gyms, you know, like where basically people, they sign a gym membership, and then their fitness and health is in their own hands, however they want to handle it, and they have a very... Uh, high aspirations, you know, in that first month or so, but then that might t- tail off. But in a CrossFit gym, the, I mean, the, on a, the great thing about it is that from day one, they have a support system with the coaches and the community, so it, it kind of holds them accountable uh, ten times more than in a global gym set, a global gym setting, I would say. So even the people that come in with no plan a- end up having like some sort of a, a path that they can follow. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the accountability, like, I think with, the, like, the people being in here, does that help out a lot whenever they bite off that chunk? Do you think the price, like, the cost of CrossFit versus a global gym helps out? Yeah, I think that sometimes that's what makes it easy. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll say this. Uh, if any type of a global gym ever had, especially probably after the new year, if they ever had, like, all the people that had a membership actually showed up, like on the same day or like in even like whatever time frame, if everybody that had a membership there, they wouldn't be able to support that many people. Like they're almost banking on you not coming. Like oh, yeah. They think they, they, they sell memberships so cheaply because they just kind of like do that shotgun approach. Because I don't really, I don't think, they're not invested in the people that are coming there. Like they can advertise that, that hashtag and that line all day long, all they want. But besides like that first initial conversation you have with someone about signing up, I go, other than that, they, you come in there, you check in, and then you, you just do your own thing, unless you pay for personal training or something like that. But a, a lot of people don't have, not 100% sure what to do. <clears throat> but, you know, in here, the awesome thing about that is, like I just said earlier, is from day one, they're, we're not holding their hand by any means, but we are making sure that they're, you know, technically sound, you know, efficient in their movement, and then we can, like, just introducing the whole CrossFit method to them. Um, which holds them accountable and they, they feel like uh, it's kind of one of those things like if you don't see someone for a couple of days or whatever we're checking in on them seeing where they're at uh, we have a pretty good idea of like when people are going on vacation and things like that so like <laughs> when they should yeah. be back by I mean people I mean, I just had someone the other day like come up and say hey I'm going to be at like because they know we check in on them like hey I'm going to be out of town for like a week and a half just a heads up you know who goes to the front, who goes to the front desk at like a global gym and says hey I'm going to be out of town for a week and a half like, you know, and, you know, and just letting you know, they let us know because we know, they know because we set that, that tone and that standard at the very beginning that we're going to hold you accountable because we, I mean, the, I guess the difference between like the CrossFit model is we don't need uh, advertisement. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. need to advertise because I, if I do my job correctly here, if we do our jobs correctly, I have a hundred, a hundred plus people that are my walking, talking advertisements every single day. If I do what I'm doing, if we do what we're doing correctly, um, and so that, that that holds us accountable, um, because and it, it holds us accountable to make sure that they get results and they achieve their goals and, uh, to, and all all that. Well, how so? How do you su- like somebody walks in the door? How do you suggest that they set their goals? Like they're just starting out on their journey of being like, hey, I want to get healthy because. I, I mean, I believe that the wholeheartedly they want to get healthy. Yeah, like, they don't want to just sit there in that same thing. And I just had that like conversation with uh, Siobhan on here about like the mental side of things, which is actually more fascinating, I think, than the actual physical side and more important than that, because there's something causing them to quit. Like something's causing them not to be able to keep going with it. Yeah, it's the whole, I mean, it's, it's, this is this saying is nothing new. There's nothing I came up with, but it's like trusting the process in general about uh, with just this whole with the whole CrossFit method, but like as far as goal setting goes, I mean, I'm, I'm always been a big fan of you know the, the smart style of goals. You know, the specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, timely, 
And that all comes, it's kind of all saying the same thing, where the long of it, long, long and short of it is you, you can't, you come in here with a goal that's not realistic or reasonable in the time frame that you think it is. Uh, it's like, I'm never going to shoot someone's goal down. Someone comes in here and they say they want to lose a hundred pounds. That's not, that is not a bad goal by any means, but it's a matter of like fixing the factors inside the gym and outside the gym that have gotten you to that point in general. Like well, what has made you like uh, want to lose a hundred pounds? Like, first of all, is that a health, is that a reasonable or healthy goal? If someone that is 200 pounds comes in here and it's like a six or maybe like a, I don't know, six, three male as 200 pounds as I want to lose hundred pounds. That's not a healthy goal. Like we got, <laughs> now, now we're going to have to educate him a little bit. But if someone that's like, 300 pounds comes in and tells me that, okay, that's awesome. Okay, that's a great goal to have as far as you know, what you want to do, but what are you doing outside of the gym? And so I'm all about small changes that will create habit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I can't, you can't just say, okay, well, you need to start eating better. You need to start uh, working out here every single day or like every single five days a week, at an hour a time. And I need you also to make sure you're getting, you know, eight to you know, seven to 10 hours of sleep a night. Need you to do all that right off the bat. Well, that's not going to happen. Like no one can make that kind of a change if they haven't, because they've most likely had in their life everything that's been telling them to do the opposite, which is how they've got to that point the first time. So I need to make a small change in habit. So I kind of tell them like, what's your day? What's your day like? What's a typical day like for you? What are you? What are you eating? How, like, how's your sleep? How's this, that, and the other? And once they tell me a few things, I'm like, okay, all we want to do for the next two weeks, okay, is maybe they're telling me they. Like, you know, I, I eat okay, but like, man, I really like to snack on like candy and chocolate and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. All I want you to do is just one or two days a week, take that out. You know, just t and, and journal it and let me know you took it out and the days you took it out. Cool. All right. Let's make, let's take the next week. Okay. You did it. Good deal. We're creating change now. Let's go to like three or four days a week. And then we start like tackling. Okay. Now I want you to add in, you know, maybe some more vegetables into your, into your thing. And it's the same thing with fitness inside of here. If I'm trying to teach somebody a certain skill or a lift and they've been doing it at a certain weight for, and then this is the, and they're technically sound and they're efficient in their movement, it's the same principle. And now I can start adding like, okay, we're going to start doing this weight or we're going to start doing this movement because you've, you, you've shown the consistency and the, and the technical efficiency with it. So I need you to start progressing onto it. So it's small changes that are going to create long-term, like long-term change, you know, long-term goals and it's just habit habit for me. and those are tough for people though because they're gonna they see the end result of like anybody does human nature like you see the end result of like the guy that's lifting all the weight like whether it be a snatch or you're at golds and you've got like this guy benching all this stuff or curling all this weight mm -hmm. and he's got big gigantic muscles they see that they don't see the in-between process all the times that that like that person worked on things where they started like uh starting with a pvc is boring because it's not as glamorous, but it's important. Like, so you're you're skipping the step. It's like you can relate to it at anything in life. You wouldn't go in. I mean, maybe you do go into your job, but like you go into your regular job. You started. You're on your second day, but you automatically think you should be a manager at this operation. Yeah, like, and those it, and, and that's you the. You can't do that. You have to go through the steps so you understand how the business works. Yeah, like you know, putting in the you know. Lack of a better way to say it, putting in the time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you got you got to put in your time before you can do this kind of thing, and that's what I try to really emphasize to people that come in here, and the ones that the ones that end up you know, buying in are the ones that see some really awesome change. Like, I mean, I just had yesterday. Now, remember that workout? It was it was they were doing the, the march in the hero one. They're doing one heavy deadlift. Yeah, and I tell them like, okay, you need to, this is going to be a deadlift. that's going to kind of make you a little nervous. I go, we still want this. To be, we obviously want this to be technically sound, but I want this to to scare you a little bit with the weight, okay? This is gonna be the emphasis today. And somebody, one of the one of the gals in here at one of the classes, she said, "Man, I just that's my old one rep max." And she, I was watching her as she's moving the weight. I'm like, let's, "Let's see how it looks." I'm like, cool, all right. That's the weight you're gonna use for the workout. So her old one rep max became a workout she just did for 20 minutes straight, and she was technically sound, safe. And made sure that I mean, like, it, it was just really cool to see. And the look on her face that she's like, "Okay, yeah." Uh, and all I said to her, like afterwards, I'm like, "Yeah, it's funny. This CrossFit thing kind of works, huh?" And, <laughs> and she, she was like, "Yeah, yeah." And you know, and she, another great example of like just like the kind of like the, the what do you call it? 
not the miss, maybe the miss behind the myth, myth, myth. Yeah, I'll say this. I can't talk this morning. Myth. <laughs> the myth behind, like our misconceptions or whatever, when it comes to like lifting weights, like that, everybody's afraid they're going to get bulky, stuff like that. And this gal is not like a. She's been here for, for cl- getting close to maybe a year or whatever, and her. She's not bulky by any means. You have to do that on purpose. That's what I'm saying. It's like those exactly right. You know, those have to be your goals. And now I have to. Yeah. Not, if you want to get bulky, okay, we got to do some a lot of different things, and you got to change a lot of different things about your diet in order to get there. It's so hard. To yeah, do exactly. that. It's it, so hard to get bulky. You can't you, just get bulky. Yeah, exactly. Or you can't just yeah, exactly. I'm, I don't want to get super muscular. I'm like, we got to do a lot of things to make that happen. I'm like if that's your goal, <laughs> I go and I go. I want you to be healthy. You know, that's that's yeah. where we go. And so it's it's just amazing to me, like just the adaptation that you see in the changes, but. Uh, you know, and I also, whenever I talk to people, I, I like to use myself as an example. I'm the perfect example of, in the sense of, I got to a point in my life where I was probably about almost 30, 45, 45 pounds heavier than what you're looking at right now. And I tried like all the different little programs I did and I was just doing it on my own. Didn't make any other changes to my life. No habits, no, didn't change anything else. I, but I, and I wasn't seeing any results. So finally, I just started making like small little changes in my diet and, you know, kind of watching what I was eating, calorie, you know, taking reducing the calories, really paying attention to that stuff. And that's when I started seeing change over time. And when I got excited about the little changes that happened, they became, you know, a little, by little by little, became a lot over time. That's, and that's, I think that's super important is getting excited over the little changes. Yeah. And like, and, and staying focused in the moment. So you set your big goal, but then you have your little things where you're like, as long as I'm making a step towards that finish line, just any sort of increment, but that patience in that, you know, that it'd be like running a, like, I want to run a marathon. I want to qualify for the Boston Marathon. How much running have you done? Well, I've done none. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. like, so if you go out and you run a 12 minute mile and then after, a, uh, you know, two or three weeks of training, you're running like 30 seconds faster or a minute faster and you're like, dang it, I'm never going to make it. I'm going to quit. Like, no way. You just made that step. Like you need to celebrate that you just increased your time, you know, by even the smallest of seconds. Yeah. And the big goals are always, they're okay to have. I tell people like, that's a, that's a great goal. That's a great goal. I go, but I all, you always try to want to lead them a little bit in the, like in a direction of, okay, what's the, but what's a measurable and a reasonable goal we can try to shoot for right now. That's going to put you down you know, put you on that path to achieving the big goal. Yeah. And then when they achieve that small, like when you kind of check in with them, see like, did you, were you able to you know, make that little change over these last two weeks? Yep. I hit it. Awesome. That's great. I go, now let's go do the next one. Then all of a sudden, like when you're kind of keeping, keeping tabs on them, they're keeping tabs on themselves. And they're making those small changes. Then you like go two, three months down the road. Like, all right, let's look where we're at. Okay, let's look where you came from. But <laughs> the the other edge of that, or the other edge of that sword with CrossFit, like it cuts both ways. I always joke about how CrossFitters are, are never satisfied. Like they could have a goal to you know lose fifty pounds or we get you know get a certain lift or something like that, and they achieve it. And the very next day, like that, very, like excuse me, not the very next day, the second after they achieve that goal, they want the next thing automatically, which is awesome because it always keeps them hungry. Yeah. It's kind of like okay, that's you, that's a good, great goal to have. That's the next goal, but man, let's just let's let's, let's, <laughs> let's bask in the light of this goal we just achieved right now. This is awesome. This is a great day. And like, yeah. hey, but I just love how it keeps them hungry for the new one. The so. best thing is like they like I mean, and I'm guilty as well, but like. You th- when you think about it in the, in the little term like that is like you lift if you increase even one pound on your lift yeah. right within what two months th- think about that every two months you li- increase a pound if you did that every two months for the rest of your life like how much weight would you be lifting yeah. you know what uh-huh. I mean like it's it, you know well, they see all these people on TV they increase like you know ounces you know uh, half yeah. pounds yeah. and one, I use that every you know year. one pound over a year you know and that like those things because you eventually get to points where your your little victories are more on techniques and how many times you hit those lifts and like there's levels to it where it gets harder the further you get into it and that's when we like and when we maxed out a lot of the potential like trying to like get on people like man you were like look where you're at right now look you're, you're almost a complete fitness athlete as far as like what you wanted to achieve here it goes now it's like the little, like we're going to make littler changes you're not going to see like what they like the the 
with how they're described those beginner gains because you haven't been doing anything up to this point now you've been doing something you've been really concentrating on you're so you're seeing a big huge jump because the adaptation has really been driven but now we've driven that adaptation so long now we're going to start making the little changes here or uh, you know and then that's and that's another whole that's a whole new beast yeah. to try to get someone to go down with that yeah because they're so used to like that big that big huge jump that they had initially and it's like no it doesn't always happen you that didn't way. really plateau you're just like you're working through it right now it's getting harder yeah like you're so you, you've gotten so good you're so you, you know it's so great right now like now we just now it's going to make little changes like olympic lifters talk about that if you ever listen to them they, they you'll see them like even like on instagram they hit a lift and it's like oh that's my that's my old pr i haven't hit that in over a year and these are like olympic weightlifters and they haven't hit their old PR and, and you know, their, their, their current PR in over a year. It just tells you like how it, it just swings. The pendulum will swing here and there depending. And these are elite athletes that they, that's what they do. That's all they do is Olympic lift. So they've reached their genetic potential or their, their potential potential. So they're trying just to move that needle ever so slightly every single day. It, it's hard to think about it, but like it, you know, really and truly in life all the way around, Whatever you do, the better you get at something, the better you want to be at something, the tougher that gets and the harder it gets and the more that it asks of you. And that, well, and, and think about this. A good analogy would be like, like a, a competitive shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like a competitive shooter, if they hit the bullseye or like, you know, center mouse, like right there, like nine out of 10, they still do, like, they, everybody's like, that's amazing. But he's like, man, I missed that one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But even when he hits that, yeah. when even when he hits that one, like that's the culmination. Like that's that's the peak. You know what I'm saying? Like that's he's hit like, ten out of ten. Hit the hit the bullseye, and or even with you know it could be a competitive bow hunter, whatever you want to say. Yeah, but you can go faster. How can the how can he improve on that? Yep. And it's like okay, you know he can't do a lot of improvement on that, but he can be consistent and maintain that high level uh, of performance. Like that's the new goal. Maintain the high level performance. Don't be satisfied with any single like when any day you come in here, anything other than close to perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because he can't get any better potentially, but he could get worse if he let himself get worse. You know, and if that's that's the thing is like once you've reached that high level of performance, are you gonna let it drop off? Are you gonna let it go away because there's no other mountain to climb? No. Now the mountain to climb is consistency and staying there and seeing how long you can stay on top of the mountain. And it, another thing on top um, to go with those sort of things is like changing up like it's okay when your goals change you don't have to get depressed because like like you said you said a hundred pound you know i want to lose a hundred pounds and then you get halfway into it and you're like maybe like 50 pounds is realistic and would be nice like i would look it's okay to change those things and i'm saying that from a perspective of like i did like you and i both we were like more into the competitive side of the sport of things Mm -hmm. and then over time you know families your interests like what you love to do it changes like me i didn't do a competition outside the open all last year yeah but i did more fishing i rode mountain bikes i tried a bunch of new things like and then realizing like all that fitness stuff and everything i don't have to stop doing this thing at all because that goal changed it actually helps me in all those other things outside like outside to go play to go do things like i just don't have to be I, I'm not pigeonholing myself just because I'm not being a competitive athlete or my goal changed doesn't mean I have to stop and that's, in that pursuit. And that's the perfect way to put it, like in the sense of if CrossFit has like, helped someone achieve like that level of health and wellness in their life where now they can really enjoy life, like that's when they come in here like, man, I kind of achieve, like if someone comes to me and says, kind of achieve the body composition and how I feel, I kind of achieve all those goals, what's the next thing? I'm like, well, what do you want to do? Like, and then, then they'll start, and it's just through conversation, they'll tell you like, well, I want to, you know, I really want to like, I've always wanted to go hiking in Colorado up to this, whatever it may be, some type of mountain, whatever, or what, who, who knows what it could be. Like, and like, I've always wanted to do that. And like, well, now you're, you're healthy enough and well enough where you can really, you, you can do that. Go do it. Yeah. I mean, you can, that, that's exactly, I go, I want to, I want to run a half marathon. I want to do like one of those ultra races or something like that. Like doing those, like that's, those are all great goals. And this has helped you kind of uh, go, go to a tr- try to achieve that. That's, we never ever tell anybody like, no, you just got to solely do CrossFit. You just got to solely do what we tell you to do. It's like, no, you should be able to do everything you want to do in life. And this is helping you to do that. But let's, let's, let's figure out what makes you, what, you know, what drives you, what makes you happy, what really gets you excited. Uh, okay, cool. Let's, that's what it is. Let's go for it. Let's, let's see what we can do to kind of help you achieve that. Um, but 
Yeah, never be satisfied. But like you said, like I agree with you 100%. Let, let the goal evolve. Let it change. I go, now you're in a position just because you've been consistent and you've made a lot of he- good changes where you're healthy now. You're, you're really healthy now. What can you, how can you enjoy life? How can, how can you make, yeah. how, how can you make this fun for you now? Instead of like before when you didn't want, you couldn't do those things because you weren't healthy enough. Well, it was too short. Yeah, right? exactly. It's too short and you're in here to be healthier and to like, you know what I mean? You're in here to be healthy. So why not enjoy what you've worked with? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like set a goal and enjoy something that you like and let it change. Let it do something new and different. And like that's what I always say that keeps me silly and young all the time is that I'm always doing different things. My mind's always working from a beginner's mindset. You know, because I'm, I'm like, oh, I've done this for a while, and I'd like to try something new. And that's gonna be. Know? They could have always had like some maybe dream that they thought was far fetched, and because they, because th- they thought not only was it limited by time and resources, but overall in general by their level of health. Mm-hmm. Like I'll never be able to do that. I'm not healthy enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Like I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it if I wanted to. Well, now all of a sudden, like they maybe rethink about some. They rethink that goal, and they think. Okay, well, not really. The only thing holding me back is a little bit of time and resources, maybe, and like maybe that's not doesn't seem as hard to achieve that because now I'm super healthy and I can I can do that. Like, just help, you know, trying people to get to rethink that, kind of go back in time. Like, what did you want to do like 20 years ago? Like, what, what were you, what was in your mind? And sometimes I I found people that in here where and I'm I'm an example of that is like where the career that I was in I'm not in anymore and. I got healthy through CrossFit, and so what it, it made me want to share that with other people, and that's that wasn't that was like opening a gym and doing all those things didn't like you always taught I thought about like oh, man it'd be awesome like when you were young to like open your own business and be your own boss and make your own hours and do all those things. Well, guess what? Like CrossFit allowed me to do that because I got healthy, I had the time and resources, and I was like I can do it. I, I can make it. I, I have the knowledge base where I can, and I want to increase my knowledge base. I'll be able to do this now. Okay, it doesn't seem so far fetched. Only only goal I had to do was, all right, I got to convince my wife this is a good idea, and she, I was able to show her that it was a good idea because I had achieved certain things through health and fitness. She's like, yeah, you seem to have, you know, okay, I trust you. But if I would have gone to gone to her before I even had this base or achieved these things in health and fitness, she wouldn't have like, no, you're not going to be able to pull this off because you haven't done anything to make a change to like to convince me that you're anywhere near motivated to do something like that. Yeah, see that, and you haven't earned, you haven't put in that time. Exactly. That time and effort and to learn it, like really just go through the process and enjoy it and let it kind of go. Yeah. Um, It's super funny, like, and we're in the same boat, like you had a profession where you would think you would want to be super fit to be in that profession, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, you're chasing bad guys around, like you want to be in the most, like you're probably in better shape now than you were then. Yeah, 100%. Like even when you started, like you're probably in better shape. And that's the same with me. Like all my athletics and stuff, I always look back and go, man, why? I like, I should have started earlier, but I had that mindset of like, I didn't want to put that time into that, this thing, because that was always just, that was the boring stuff to me. I wanted to play. I wanted to do the playing. So I'm, I'm thinking, man, what a mistake of, in my mindset that that was to not think this goes to make me better at playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I but agree, but it also that. brings me joy that I I was able this is the one thing like you're able to change that outcome. You're not stuck in that mindset. Like you and I both changed our out like our outlook on fitness and getting healthy and we got healthy and then good things come after that, you know? It's just a matter of what the, the what health, wellness and fitness will be in, have a high capacity in any one of those things what doors it will open for you for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? What it will allow you to do. Like some people may think that they're so unhealthy that they have these kids and they they may have that thought in the back of their mind that I love my children, but I'm never going to live to see my grandchildren, you know? And now all of a sudden they've made that choice to become healthy and make some real lasting change. So they have a whole new level of joy that they they can start thinking about as, as far as that's gonna, things that are going to bring them joy because they're going to be able to have these experiences with these people they thought they'd never be around to see. You know, that, that probably gets them excited and that's just on a whole new avenue of your life that you can start looking looking down and looking at looking forward to that you weren't thinking about before because you never thought it was going to happen. Um, just because of just all, especially with like, you know, being unhealthy, 
all the downfalls and pitfalls it brings like with you know it could be diabetes all sorts of types of metabolic conditions that come out of that that which just going to limit your life expectancy too so now all of a sudden if you're healthy and your doctor's saying man you're you're really you know you're looking really good and like you're you're sound and you're like what are you gonna do now and so yeah but like i and to bring on that point like that's more impressive to see somebody come in to push through being tough having to go through the beginning stages of picking up that pvc around people who are already fit like people who keep doing that and set that mindset where they show up every day they're consistent and they do that and they hold it, you know, like I said, they work with that PVC when everybody else is throwing up a lot of weight and being able to mentally stick with that till they get better and better and better and improve. That's more impressive to me than somebody who's already strong. I celebrate consistency more than I celebrate anything else. And, and I, I consider myself more of a tough love type of a person. And so when people come to me and say that they're, um, you know, they're kind of maybe feeling a little bit uh, discouraged because they haven't achieved what they wanted to achieve yet. So the first thing I'm going to go over is like, okay, what's, what's, how you been inside the gym? Cause that's usually what I see. And I, you know, I'm normally, I have a pretty good idea, but they're going to tell me like, well, you know, I can usually hit it like one day, two days a week. I'm like, okay. So we're not super, and he, and, and it's sporadic maybe even maybe like they hit three days, one week and then no days for two weeks. I'm like, okay. So we're not super consistent in the gym then. Like we need to get more consistent with the gym. And then they tell me they're super consistent in the gym. Like, okay, well, how consistent are you outside the gym? Like, consistency is the thing I'm going to kind of tell them. Like, are you eating consistently well? Are you sleeping consistently well? And if none of those things, if some, if one of those things is is not on the table, then that's usually where, like, well, that's why. And I'm going to tell them that. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to say you need to be more consistent in the gym if you want to ha- achieve these goals. But this is completely on you. you know, yeah, so it's, I will one, help. it's one hour of your day versus how many hours are you spending stressed and not sleeping? Well, or... that's the big, the biggest thing I, I tell you. Like, this is only an hour I have you. I have you for an hour. But if you, if if the other fifteen hours you're awake for the rest of the day are crap, and you don't do anything to make sure that you're all the work you're doing inside the gym is being rewarded outside the gym. If you don't do anything outside, I can, I'm never, I'm never going to be really able to help you a lot. You know, you've got to get. Uh, the three factors I would say are nutrition. Uh, the, the three factors you have to get there that, that are more important in outside of the gym that are we, that, than what we do inside of the gym. I say are usually like nutrition, recovery, and stress. Like how can you manage all those? And if all those aren't under control, those three things aren't under control. All the work you're doing inside of the gym is just basically like pounding a brick wall with with a, with a, a twig. You're gonna maintain the same level you're at. Yeah, 100. percent Yeah, it's yeah. just gonna stay there until you fix something there that's why the mental side is so fascinating because living under the stress you know before going through like a lot of stress and not realizing how to get rid of it you know sometimes this is my stress relief like this is it Mm -hmm. i just shut it off it's social hour for me it's a fun workout but the workout actually meant less to me than the actual like stress relief and the release like the cortisol the talking to other humans the forgetting about work or whatever else is going on in there. Just that little simple release of like, hey, I'm around some friends that are like-minded or I want to be like them, one of the two. And so I'm surrounding myself with those sort of people. Yeah, we have people, I think that sometimes more than any time, we have a lot of people that come in here and say, okay, no matter what, I'm going to make it to the gym today. If I don't get to the, if I don't get to do this, if I don't get to the uh, to the post office today, if I don't get this package sent off, if I don't get this errand run, okay, no big deal. But I need to get to the gym today. Like I have to get there. Like that's just like they, they need. And it's not all. It's not just the fitness. Like that's important to them sometimes. But it's like the interaction with the community. Like that just level of like like joy that, that it brings them that just helps them kind of level out. You know, like, you know, like if, if they've hit that peak as far as the stress goes, and they come in here and it kind of levels them out, makes them just feel good, makes them happy. You know, and that's kind of like creating that type of environment in here where people can feel comfortable and happy um, is a big part of that health wellness thing. Well, I mean, if you want to, if you want to be a pro at anything, like you want to be good at your job, be a manager, you got to hang around with the managers, see what they do. Yeah. If you, if you want to be a good exerciser, you know, fitness, you want to be super healthy. Well, then guess what? You got to go hang around with healthy, healthy people, see what they do, be around it, absorb their knowledge and also like you'll eventually be the person that you're hanging around. I, I agree with that hundred percent. Like you got to learn from the people that have done it or are doing it every single day to yeah. really kind of figure out like what's the best route for you, what's going to work for you. Um, it could be like, and I think in any job, there's sometimes the people we gravitate towards that 
we that really speak to what you know what excites us and so if they if 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 you find that person i mean the best advice i can give you is like man soak up all the knowledge they had to give you if you hang around with the complainer or the guy that never shows up on time to work that's who you're gonna be like you're gonna eventually become that because that's what you're that's what you're surrounding yourself so it's like your community just you decide your community but then that decides what you're doing yeah i agree like that's i I know there's a lot of cliche uh, quotes around there about like you are who you hang around with yeah but I, I do agree with like that's how you become that kind of a thing like if you are around negative people all the time how can you ever be happy you know what I'm saying you, you tell me you're going to fit you're going to be the one happy person that fits in with like that group of <laughs> consistently complaining negative people no you got it and, and, and I have seen that in this like people come in here like man the kind of the people that I used to hang around I don't hang around them much anymore like they just don't have the same goals and and, you know, and kind of mindset that I've developed coming here. And I'm like, that's okay. It's okay to want to be around good people that make you happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you, if, if people aren't making you happy or not serving some greater purpose in your life that's bringing you joy, what are they doing then? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It, unless they're like, unless it's your, you know, your, your child or your spouse, or your family, they will usually, they're, they love you. So they're going to accompany you on that. Well, what, what, what role are they serving? You know, it's, now don't get me wrong. There's some people that we just can't get away from. It could be work, boss, whatever it may be. Yeah. But you definitely don't got to hang around them on the weekends when you're, you know, no, you don't have to. Yeah, your free time. Yeah. But I mean, and the psychology of that is kind of tough. Like when you're starting to take this journey or do a goal, you have to be cognizant and aware of the fact that like what it's going to do to your relationships. So like if you're constantly going out to the bar and drinking and you're ha- like you're around those people and then you change that, those people aren't necessarily going to follow you. And you're going to spend less time with those people. It's not like you broke up with them. It's just you're spending less time with them. Yeah, I heard you guys talk about that in your yeah. last podcast. It was Siobhan. really impactful. Yeah, like, and that was that. and that, and that's a great way to think about it. Like, and it's it's the it's the tough line that uh, people don't want to talk about, which is like you might not be friends with them anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, not like you, but it's not like you hate them. It's just no, exactly. And then we have I different this. You know, I, I want this for myself. And, and like, if I think, and think about it, like if you think about the people you were friends with 20 years ago, how many people are you still, that you were friends with 20 years ago, are you still talking to now? You know, relationships change all the time. And, and usually they're going to change with how you're living your life um, and, or where you're at and everything like that. And if you're trying to be a more positive person, uh, you're probably not going to be hanging around with the people that were super negative and you know, kind of like brought you down a lot. So, yeah. I mean, you'll find yourself trying to actively avoid them or stay away from them, which is not a bad thing. It doesn't make you a bad person to want to be, not want to be around them. Uh, um, and that's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Like, I mean, if they don't want to come with you to your new thing, then that's okay. Like it's a mutual agreement that they're going down one path, you're going down another. And it doesn't mean that that one's bad. It's like, if you want to stay in the same spot, Keep doing the same things. Yeah, and, what, and you can get equated to anything. Like if I'm getting ready, like perfect example, like the, you know, the Chiefs are playing tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we talk, we've been talking about this for the past yep. forever. Yep. So they're playing tomorrow in a playoff game. I'm going to invite my friends to come watch that with me. But if you're have if you're my friend and you have and you have no interest in football, you don't have to come, and I'm not going to be upset about it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not yeah, gonna make yeah. me. You're not gonna make me upset that you don't want to come watch something that you have no interest in whatsoever. You know, like if football does not make you excited or get you, you know, like if in, we can be friends and do other things together. But if football is not, if you're just gonna be negative and pissed off the whole entire time because you hate football, don't come. You know, and, and I'm not gonna be upset about that. I'm fine. And if and I honestly would appreciate it more if you'd say, you know what, Brian, I really just don't care about the Chiefs. And like I'm, I'm probably gonna do something else. All right, that's cool, man. I'll talk to you on Monday. Like, yeah, you're not gonna make me mad about it, and like, and that's the other side of the coin. Like, you got to be a good friend too. Like, someone if you're doing doing something, like I, I mean, there's plenty of people that do a lot of things that I have no interest in whatsoever that don't get me excited. And it, it, like, I I have friends that like to the back back home that like to skydive. I did it. I did it once, <laughs> and that was fine. <laughs> and by the look on yeah, your face, it wasn't. Th- gonna that, be that was it. Fun. Like, no, well, no. I, long story short, like that, like that. It was. It was. It, 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 <laughs> It was, de- it was definitely not like the way they described it when I went in there. It was definitely a lot harder mentally to get through it than anything else. I did it, and I, I crossed that off the bucket list, no big deal. But, like, they still do it all the time. And they asked, like, hey, you want to go do it again? No, nah, I'm good. I, I don't – it doesn't, didn't bring me joy. I was happy to see the ground, and I don't have no, no, no desire whatsoever to do it again. 
But we the next time we're doing this, we'll, uh, just give me a call. Next time you're doing this 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 activity, which is okay. And I think that's the same thing. Like, and any friend that doesn't support that, that's when you really got to start like evaluating the relationship. Like, is it a healthy relationship? If you have a friend that supports, like, yeah, that tells you, like, that invites you to go do something, and that doesn't seem so fun, but like going to the gym is what seems like a, a good idea at the time, where you're gonna go to the gym, and they don't tell you, like, okay, cool, man, uh, go go have a good workout. I'll, I'll we'll see I'll see you tomorrow or something like that. Yeah. If they if they, get, if they try to make you feel guilty about making that positive choice. Uh, then, then, then you really got to start evaluating the, the, the relationship. Yeah, that's when it gets rough. And on the flip side of that, I think as a person that's trying to change, understanding that and being that person for your other friends. Yeah. Like being the person that says, no, man, I can't go out. Like, but it's okay. You know, like, yeah, I can't yeah. go out tonight. Or like, hey, I'm going over here and being that person's friend as, as well. And like, you may not be hanging out as much, but you're still like, being the type of friend that you would want to have in your life. Yeah, 100%. And then it helps mentally with your acceptance of where you're going and your goals. And, I, th- it, you know, it all stems from that. I, I, I always say that it's, it's more important to have a good core group of people that really support you in your life than, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people that really don't, like, that, are, that, that you're acquainted with but don't bring a lot to the table, you know? Yeah. Um, that that solid base of, of a support system is really going to pay off in the long run. So I agree, man. Well, I guess we got to go pick up chickens. You have to pick up chickens. I yeah. don't have to pick. Yeah, up. not we, <laughs> not we. I got to go pick up chickens. So, yeah, all right. and we got a lot of things to do today. But this has been a fun. I, I enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, anytime, you know, anytime man. you want to talk about something, I'm here. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You're the only three time. The three, you're the, you're the, what is it? Triple C, the triple C right there. Yeah. I'm just, you're pretty, the champ. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Any any more space fillers you need, just let me know. I'll come in and talk about something. (laughs) All right, man. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Eric.